Fora TV. The world is thinking. It's not just that the Earth turns out to be very finely balanced. It's that when you begin to upset that balance, a number of feedback loops start kicking in that soon will take this problem beyond our ability to control. What do I mean? When you melt that ice up in the Arctic, you take a nice white shield off the top of the Earth that reflects 80% of incoming solar rays, and you reflect it with blue water that absorbs 80% of them. You amp up the reaction. When that ice has to refreeze in the winter, in the freezing process, it gives off heat. That heat in a process that scientists call Arctic amplification has spread inland. It's measurable 1,500 kilometers south. The main effect is the rapid melting of permafrost underneath the tundra and the taiga. It turns out that what's under that permafrost are enormous volumes of methane which is now leaching out into the atmosphere. Scientists the last two winters in the far north have reported that ponds and streams aren't freezing even at 40 below zero because there's so much methane bubbling out from beneath that it's keeping them open like a fountain. Okay. Once those forests have died, they begin not to soak up carbon the way that trees usually do, but to give it off. The soil uh, becomes a, a source of carbon, and if those trees catch on fire, which they increasingly have, then they become themselves a kind of carbon bomb producing enormous quantities of CO2 into the atmosphere. The point is, the scary point is, that at a certain place, this becomes impossible for us to control. We set this chain of events in motion by putting carbon in the atmosphere by running cars and factories and power plants, theoretically we could stop that and we'll talk about how that might happen in a little while. But at a certain point, even if we stop that, we won't be able to stop these other effects. We have no practical plan for refreezing the Arctic, for refreezing the tundra, for turning those dead forests back into living ones. The point of all of this is that global warming is not some future threat, one of several on a list of problems that we need to be doing something about. It is a capital E emergency that we have to address now and that if we do not address now, we may not be able to address ever. Time is much shorter than we had understood. We do not know exactly how short it is, but the best guesses are extremely sobering. Rajendra Pachari, the Indian-born scientist who is head of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, accepted the Nobel alongside Al Gore uh, two years ago, said recently that if we have not begun to make very fundamental reforms of our energy systems by 2012, that it may well be that we will never get back ahead of this curve, if it's possible even at this point to do so.